Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we do calculus on generalized surfaces. And in today's part 30 we will talk more about differential forms, namely we will consider some examples. This is very helpful because differential forms we will use later when we will do the integration on manifolds. Ok, but before we start with the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via Patreon. Only because of your support, it's possible for me to create such mathematical videos. And please click the link in the description to see which additional material you can download for this video. Ok, then let's immediately start by recalling the definition of a differential form on a manifold. It's simply a so-called k-form on the manifold M which is also differentiable at all points. And the set of all these forms is denoted by omega km. And now since the big characterization of a manifold is that it is locally Euclidean, we can also express this differential form in a local nature. And this is what we have learned in the last video around every point P we can write omega as this sum here. Which means we have real valued component functions here and we want them to be differentiable. Moreover, here at the end you see we simply have the wedge product of one forms. Ok, then I would say let's immediately write down some examples for differential forms. First I would say let's start very simple by considering a very flat manifold. Namely, we can just take the Euclidean space Rn and maybe we keep it even more simple by taking R2. This is very helpful because we only need one chart for the whole manifold, namely the identity chart. Moreover, also the tangent space is not complicated, it's also R2 again. Hence also the coordinate basis is very simple, it's just the standard basis in R2. So we can just write del k is equal to ek. And now you might recall these one forms dxj from above are exactly defined by using the coordinate basis. More precisely the result here should be exactly the conica delta jk. Therefore if we see these coordinate vectors here as column vectors we can identify the one forms with row vectors. And indeed if we do that here it makes everything very simple. Because then we can simply write dx1 as the row vector 1 0. And similarly dx2 is 0 1. Hence this combination here with one form and a tangent vector is simply a matrix multiplication then. You see row vector times a column vector gives us a scalar. Ok, and now we can go to a general 2 form on R2, which means here we have to form the wedge product of these two one forms. And this should also not be so complicated because we only deal with two factors here. And indeed, since it's a 2 form, it gets two vectors as an input. So let's say we have a vector A1 with two components and a vector A2 with two components. And maybe, to keep it simple, let's say that the components have names like in a matrix. In that sense, the first vector here should be a column vector with entries a11 and a21. And the next column vector should be a12, a22. But of course, the names are not so important here. The important thing is that you know how the wedge product is defined. And there you know, it's the sum over all permutations. And please never forget that the sign of the permutation sigma always goes in. And then we simply have the product of the one forms where we have the permutations of the vectors inside. So the first entry here is a index sigma of 1. And the next one a sigma of 2. Ok, and now we can simply apply our one forms and then we see here for the first factor we get the first entry in the vectors and for the second factor we get the second entry. So more concretely with our components of the matrix we first have a1 sigma 1 times a2 sigma 2. 
So now for S2, you know we only have two permutations, so we could simplify this sum and simply write down what we have. However, we don't have to do that because you should immediately recognize here that this is simply the Leibniz formula for the determinant. The determinant of the 2 times 2 matrix given by the coefficients on the left hand side. In other words, our 2 form here is just given by the determinant. And here you can just use your linear algebra knowledge, which tells you that the determinant is a volume measure. Or more precisely, in two dimensions, it measures areas, so a two dimensional volume. Hence, this two form here does exactly the same job. Now, this is such an important property that I want to put this into an example B here. In fact, it's not hard to see that the calculation above also works in the general case Rn. So we consider n forms in the n-dimensional space and they should measure n-dimensional volumes. Indeed, the wedge product of all these dx1, dx2, dx3 and so on gives us always the determinant in Rn. Therefore, a general n form here can be always written with this determinant. The only thing that we have to include are the component functions of omega, but here we only have one. And using the same notation as before, we would give it an index, which is 1, 2, 3 and so on until we reach n. And there's only one, because the only ordered wedge product here is dx1, dx2 and so on. Moreover, now we know this is simply the determinant in Rn. It's the determinant that gets n column vectors as an input. This follows from the calculation above and the Leibniz formula. Now this is important to remember because it means such an omega here is completely determined by this component function here, which is a smooth map. Okay, so let's see if we can use that with the next example. Here let's use the flat manifold R2 again, but now with a more complicated chart. Indeed, I want to use a chart that represents the polar coordinates. Hence, the parameterization phi has radius and an angle as coordinates. So usually you denote the radius by r and this angle by phi. However, since phi is already occupied, I will take a lowercase theta. Okay, and then you know this definition for the polar coordinates is not so complicated. It's a two-dimensional vector where we have r times cosine of theta in the first component and r times sine of theta in the second component. Okay, then I would say let's omit some technical details like where the map phi is defined or where the chart is defined and let's concentrate on the calculation with the one forms. For this we first need the coordinate basis with respect to our parameterization phi. There, please recall, the definition is del j is given by phi star ej. And phi star is simply the differential of phi, which we can represent by the Jacobian of phi. And this is at a given point p tilde, which is represented by r and theta. Therefore, for example, del 1 is simply the partial derivative of phi with respect to r. And this is evaluated at a point we can also call r theta. Hence the calculation here is not so hard. It's cosine theta sine theta. And here we can see, and this is something you definitely should remember, that the coordinate vector del 1 changes when you change the point. Hence in order to be precise we should put in the dependence of r and theta in the notation of del 1. And then of course also the same for del 2. Also there, the calculation of the partial derivative is not so complicated. It's minus r sine theta and r cosine theta. Okay, so now we know the coordinate basis, which means we can also write down the corresponding one forms. As before, they need to be dual to this coordinate basis here. And now instead of dx1 and dx2, we just call them dr and d theta. And now as before, we could represent this one form as a row vector. And here it's not hard to see that cosine sine theta exactly does the job 
for our dual basis. This means we get out 1 if we put in del 1 and if we put in del 2 we get out 0. And in a similar way we can figure out what d theta is. It's minus sine theta cosine theta divided by r. Okay, so this is totally correct, but as you can see here, usually for the one forms we want to have the point p in, and p lives on the manifold. So it's the image of r theta because they live in the domain of definition for the parameterization phi. Hence, if we want to have that, we have to substitute the variables and let's say p is given by x, y. And then you should see, instead of cosine theta, we can write x divided by r. And instead of sine theta, we can write y divided by r. And then instead of r, we can simply write the square root of x squared plus y squared. However, of course, we should write the whole thing as a row vector again. Okay, and then in the same way, we can rewrite d theta. Okay, so there we have it. There we have our two one forms, and we already know we can combine them to one two form. And we already know from before that this is the volume form for R2. The only question is, what is the component function in front of the determinant? And you know, we simply get that by putting in the canonical unit vectors. This is simply because if you put in the canonical unit vectors into the determinant, you get out 1. Therefore, now let's do it here. So the calculation is simple. We have dr of e1 times d theta of e2. And then minus flipped orders. Okay, then I would say let's use the representation with r and theta variables. Because then the first thing here is just 1 divided by r times cosine squared minus 1 divided by r times minus 1 times sine squared. So we see cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1, so the only thing that remains is 1 divided by r. Or, in other words, instead of the determinant in r2, we can write r times dr wedge d theta. So that's something you should remember. This is the volume form represented with polar coordinates. And here please recall, we already know that the determinant is dx wedge dy. Moreover, there you already see, this is what we will do later in integrations. So when we want to change variables, coordinate systems, this is exactly what will happen in the integration. However, there we will put it into a more general context, because we want to integrate a lot of different differential forms. But before we start with that, we first should talk more about measuring volumes or angles or distances and so on, which means we have to add more geometry to our manifold. Therefore, I really hope we meet in the next videos, so have a nice day and bye bye! Mm -hmm.